Contact sheets are very important in film photography. They give us a glimpse of all the photos that we took in a roll and we can decide if they are worth printing or not. But we don't need such a thing in digital photography, or do we? Obviously, we can see what a digital photo looks like without having to print it, but I want to argue that contact sheets can be very useful for digital photographers to share and to show their thought process or to learn from it. This is my case. I like to shoot a lot. I've talked about this before. I do work the scene and I like to take uh, multiple shots of the same subject from different angles or to vary just slightly the same composition. I almost always delete all the frames, but the one that I like the most. In those cases, I like to make a contact sheet with all my shots and the one that I selected in the end. I like to keep them around and I like to look at the ones that I made from a couple years ago to see how my uh, workflow and my way of working in general in the field has changed. Let's take a quick look at some of the contact sheets that I've made and then I'm going to show you really quick how to uh, make one in Photoshop. All right, so this is the first one. This was a church in Austria. Uh, as you can see, I uh, started taking or focusing on the uh, tower from different angles. Then I tried to uh, capture the whole church from farther away. I tried to include this tree until I found the angle that I really liked the most with the mountains in the background. I took a few shots with the church a little bit uh, farther down, a little bit farther up until I found the frame that I really liked, the one that I ended up uh, choosing as the, the good one, that is uh, this one. Here, this is one of my favorite images uh, to date, the one of the full moon in white sands. And uh, here you can tell how, how I approach this. Uh, I started with uh, the zoom lens, the 16 to 70, so it wasn't long enough. And I, I thought, or I saw that I wanted the moon bigger than that. So here's when I switched the lens to the uh, 55 to 210, so I was able to make the moon bigger in the frames. As you can tell, I was playing with uh, placing the moon uh, lower and higher in the frame, but I knew that I wanted, but I knew that I wanted the, some dunes uh, on the bottom and some space in between the moon and the top of the frame. I uh, ended up, or I finally uh, found uh, these, uh, these two dunes I really like the lines, uh, what they were creating here. But this, uh, this one had a lot of details here. The same with this one or this one. This one was a lot. I tried to remove those details from the dunes, pointing the, the camera farther up, but there were not enough dunes there until I really finally found the angle that I, that I liked. And uh, as you can see, this is pretty much the same image, the same composition, but this is uh, from a slightly longer focal length, the moon is bigger than here, and also the moon is a little bit farther up. I like that other one, the, this one that I marked here in red. This is a very recent photo of a foggy road. As you can see, I tried different things, different focal lengths, and I tried to uh, split the frame in different ways. Here the bridge is slightly bigger, it has more importance in the frame than the one that I ended up choosing the, this one. Uh, it shows more of the curve of the road, so I like that one more. This is another image, another recent image from a different road. As you can see, what I was playing with here was with the angle of the camera. And the first one is a little bit lower at eye level, I believe. The other ones are higher up. I was holding the camera, so it shows more of the line, it shows more of the road. This uh, angle gives the road a little bit more of importance, it makes it uh, bigger. And also what I was playing with here is if I wanted to show where this uh, cliff ended or not, like here, or just show a little bit, I ended up choosing this one, kind of hinting the end of the, that cliff. Another example, this uh, saguaro in Arizona. This is the exact same composition. I didn't move the camera, but it was a long exposure. And uh, I usually take a few long exposures if I can, because as you can see here, the clouds look completely different. I mean, not completely different, but they look different. And I ended up liking the, the clouds here on the last frame the most. And the last one, this is another example of another situation where I take a lot of photos of the same composition, because here the light was uh, changing quite a lot. The, the subject was completely dark here, and here was completely lit by the light. I, I ended up, I was uh, lucky enough to get like a mix of both. The foreground was uh, bright and the top of this uh, needle was bright as well, while the rest of it was uh, dark. I really like the contrast in this photo. So by now you might be interested in creating or making your own contact sheets. I'm going to show you really quick how to do it in Photoshop. 
For that, you go to a file, automate, and select contact sheet two. And here, you just have to select a folder where you're gonna want to have all your photos, the photos that you're gonna use for that contact sheet. Just uh, click open and just play with the settings that you have here. You can stop this video and see and take a look at the ones that I use. Uh, but yeah, and just click on OK and the Photoshop will take care of the rest and you'll get the contact sheet in just a few seconds. You can use Lightroom for this as well, or you could use a word processor like Google Docs or something like that. It would be more a manual uh, task. You will have to drag the, the, the photos manually, but you could do it. And I think it's uh, very useful uh, to keep and to uh, save your images uh, or the, the scene, how you work that scene, and to show that thought process, not only to other people, but maybe to yourself, to your future self. This is what I wanted to share today. Thank you so much for watching again and see you in the next one.